top 10 Australian riders of all time. Richie Port. Richie Port competed originally in triathlon, making the move to road racing in 2006. His performances in 2008 and 2009 were enough to secure him a two-year deal with Saxobank, and Port immediately delivered, coming seventh at the Giro d'Italia, wearing the pink jersey and winning the Young Riders classification. In 2012, Port made the move to Team Sky, and although he has mainly worked for Wiggins and Froome, he's also taken his own opportunities, winning Paris-Nice in two stages in 2013 and the Volta Algarve the year before. He also finished second at the Criterium de Dauphiné, Tour of the Basque Country and Criterium International in 2013. While he's only number 10 on our list, Port looks like he has the talent to win much more over the course of his career. Michael Rogers Mickey Rogers is Australia's most successful time trialist, having won the World Championships on three occasions. He's another rider to have initially made his name on the track, but in 2001 he began his professional road career. Apart from his TT victories, Rogers has also won the Tour of California, the Tour Down Under and the Tour of Belgium. More recently, he's become a super domestique for riders such as Bradley Wiggins and Alberto Contador. In late 2013, Rogers was suspended by his team after testing positive for clenbuterol after racing in the Tour of Beijing. Bradley McGee Bradley McGee's early career was focused mainly on the track. His list of achievements in that discipline are too long to list, and it was no surprise that his first successes on the road came in prologues. In 2003, McGee won the prologue of the Tour de France, of course taking the yellow jersey with it. David Miller had looked on course to take the win until he unshipped his chain, but has since admitted that McGee, who always had a clean reputation, was the deserved winner on the day. In 2004, he took 8th place overall at the Giro d'Italia and won the route to Sud, but that was the pinnacle from a GC point of view, eventually retiring at the end of 2008. Stuart O'Grady Like McGee and Rogers, Stuart O'Grady's early successes came on the track and he won a silver medal in the team pursuit at the 1992 Olympics, aged just 18. In 1995 he turned professional, and in 1998 he took his first major road win, taking a stage win at the Tour de France, although he has since admitted to using EPO in preparing for the race. He won a further stage of the Tour de France in 2004, but his biggest success came when he won Paris-Roubaix in 2007. Anna Mears Anna Mears is one of the most successful female track athletes of all time, her first major success as a senior came in the 2004 Olympics, where she won a gold medal in the 500m time trial, taking the world record with it. In 2008, she took a silver in the sprint, which was made all the more remarkable by the fact that she had broken her neck whilst competing at the start of the year. In 2012, she took another gold and bronze at the London Olympics. Still active, Mears recently set a new world record in the 500m of 32.836 seconds. Simon Gerrans By his own admission, Simon Gerrans doesn't have the biggest engine in the peloton, which makes his hit rate all the more impressive. He's often referred to as the sniper, as when he's got a target, he usually hits it. Gerrans started cycling in his late teens after a couple of bad knee injuries sustained through motocross, and was in fact introduced to the sport by Phil Anderson. He is one of the few riders to have won a stage of all three of the Grand Tours, including two at the Tour de France. He's also a double national champion and double winner of the Tour Down Under. But his biggest one-day race victory came in the spring of 2012 when he won Milan San Remo. Robbie McEwen Robbie McEwen came into the professional scene in 1996 for the Dutch Rabobank team. But it wasn't until 1999 that he made his big breakthrough, winning on the Champs-Élysées. He went on to win a total of 12 stages of both the Tour de France and the Giro d'Italia, plus the green jersey on three occasions. McEwen also took a liking to the one-day race Paris Brussels, which he won four times. McEwen was well known for not needing a big lead-out train, but nevertheless his palmares includes over 100 victories, making him one of the most prolific winners of modern times. Phil Anderson Phil Anderson was at the top of his game when the Anglophones were still few and far between. In 1978, aged 19, he won the Commonwealth Games, and the following year he moved to France to be with the renowned amateur team ACBB. It was just one year later that he turned professional with the Peugeot outfit, and over the following 15 years he won two stages of the Tour de France, one stage of the Giro, the Criterium de Dauphiné, the Tour de Suisse, and the Amstel Gold Race. 
He was also the first non-European rider to wear the yellow jersey at the Tour de France when he captured it in 1981. Sir Hubert Opperman Hubert Opperman was the first Australian cyclist to make his way to compete in Europe, and in 1928 he finished 18th at the Tour de France, despite almost a complete lack of team support. Over the course of his 20-year career, Opperman broke over 100 cycling records. He died in April 1996, aged 91. A memorial statue was built in his hometown of Rochester, Victoria. Cadell Evans Cadell Evans is Australia's only Grand Tour winner, having won the Tour de France back in 2011. However, this was the pinnacle of a career which started all the way back in 1995, as a junior mountain biker who won a bronze medal at the World Championships. Evans' switch to the road came in the summer of 2000 when he joined Seiko, and the success was immediate. He wore the pink jersey at the Giro d'Italia and eventually finished 14th. Since then he's won the Tour of Romandie twice, the World Road Race Championships, Flesh Wallon, the Criterium International and Tirreno Adriatico. Consistency is Evans' strength and it has led him to a total of 10 top 8 finishes and Grand Tours. Who's your favourite Australian rider of all time? Let us know in the comments section down below. It's a criteria which takes place two days before the first stage of the Tour Down Under and just because it doesn't...